Hi y'all, it's Brooke Kelly here, and I am going to talk to you guys about compression sacks. So I just started getting into this whole backpacking world, and I know very little, but I'm learning as I go. And the greatest thing in the world, or the greatest invention in the world, I have to say, for backpacking are compression sacks. So you might be wondering what that is too if you're also new to it. Well, let me give you an idea. You have a backpack to work with, right? So some people will carry a 40 liter, 50 liter, 60 liter. Most people that do long extended hikes go for um, at least a 60 liter backpack to be able to carry everything they need from their sleeping stuff to their shelter stuff to their food and some basic necessities and toiletries and whatnot. Um, so, so far the 60 liter has been really good for that. The 40 liter I can get everything in for a nice weekend camping trip, but with five days supply of food, I really needed the bigger back um, for the 60 liter. Another thing about some of the bigger backpacks is they do weigh more, but they have epic back supports and hip support, so everything really um, sits up nice and high, and surprisingly, it's no pressure on the back whatsoever. Everything, all the weight is in your legs. So that being said, I need to fit everything into this bag. And it seems like a big bag until you start adding up everything that you're bringing with you. Like your tent. Your tent seems pretty huge, right? So my tent, I got the REI um, Passage 1. And this is a single person tent, but it came in a big bag like this with the poles and everything else. And it was stuffed to the max. Well, I can't carry a giant bag like this. This would take up nearly my half my pack, if not more, if I put this in as it comes. So instead, I bought a little miniature waterproof compression sack, and it's not a high quality one. So this is one of the, the cheaper ones that you can find online. I found this on Amazon. And the brand name, I don't even know how to pronounce. So I'm just gonna bring that in nice and close for you so you can try to pronounce that yourself. But this one is just a little six liter compression sack. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Six liters, tiny little bag for all this tent stuff. So you can see, I have like the tent itself, the footprint, it all sits on the ground, and then the rain fly, right? There's a lot of stuff. So this was taking up a massive amount of space in my pack. So what I do is I roll everything up, and then I start stuffing it into this little tiny bag. So I put it in this bag, and some people don't even roll, some people just shove it in there as is, like they don't even take the time to roll anything. So I'll shove it into this bag, and again, this is the cheaper of the types of compression bags, but I'm not looking for anything fancy because I have a waterproof um, fly that goes over my entire backpack, so I really shouldn't have to worry about my tent getting wet while I'm traveling in the rain. I'll get this all shoved in here, and you gotta use a little muscle to get it all in. But now the whole thing's in this little green bag, right? It's pretty stuffed. I'll pull the strap, put that in the little closer, I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> but then, the magic is after you get everything in the bag. So some of them have these double parts, so like more, more fabric than others. So some bags are just a stuff sack and that's pretty much what we just did but what turns it into a compression sack is all these little straps and nibs on the side so I'll start by just trying to pull some of the straps down I'm just keeping it even and balanced and this little compression bag on Amazon was only like $15 where the fancy ones can be like 35 and more and we're going to talk about those ones in a second too so you want to start by pulling a little on each side and going around because my mistake was when the first compression bag I got was full of my sleeping bag because it came with one and I thought like oh I'll pull all the way down on the one side shouldn't have done that because I ended up ripping it <laughs> so instead you really want to go around in a circle and it will make funny noises almost like fart noises <laughs> and you go around until it's all the way compact down and now I have this tiny little ball, and that's my entire tent. Of course, you can't compress metal poles, so those will just be strapped together on the outside of my bag, or even in the inside. I think I may have enough space for that. But now, my entire tent fits in this little tiny ball. That's a lot less space than this 
let's compare it. This big giant bag, now it's this little bag. Big difference. So that's the tent compression bag. And again, this is the brand name for the cheap, inexpensive one. Might not last forever, but it's inexpensive and it's gonna at least last me the summer why I'm doing all this little stuff. So now let's say you wanna spend some good money. The one you wanna spend good money on is the waterproof one that is definitely going to be waterproof, not uh, maybe waterproof. Um, and that's gonna be for your food because you need to tie your food up in the trees at night so the bears don't come and eat them. Um, hopefully that'll help. I really still don't understand the logic behind that because bears climb trees, but sure, whatever. I guess it makes it a little bit harder for them to come get them. So this is the Sea to Summer um, waterproof bag, and this particular bag is Evolve, and here's the packaging that it came in. So this is a 40 liter bag, and this will hold a week's worth of food. So for me, I'm not one of those crazy backpacker people that just eats junk food the whole time. I think it's really important to eat healthy meals. So these are, of course, everyone's favorite, the Mountain House pre-ready meals. You just pour hot water into them and you have an entire meal. Unfortunately, they're really expensive. They average nine to $12 per meal. So three meals a day, every day on the trail, that would be too expensive. So I can't afford to do that. But what I can afford to do is do these for night for my dinners because it's nice to have a nice hot meal at the end of the day, especially because that will keep you warm and uh, cozy in the tent at night. And after hiking all day, you want a really nice cooked meal. But during the day, you actually don't want to eat as heavy. But being said that, you don't also want to just eat crap food because a lot of people will just eat junk food like candy and stuff like that throughout. Now you can see I'm still stuck in this bag. I still have a ton of food in here. This is a week supply of food now. And a lot, so what I did is I rationed out my lunches. So I made bags with the proper amount that I need for my protein intake and whatnot. And dried fruit is the best kind of sugar that you want because it releases slowly, it breaks down slowly in the body rather than candy bar will just spike your blood sugar, give you a burst of energy, and then that's that. And that's all you have to work with where this will be long-lasting energy. This will sustain me throughout the day. And then for my protein, I did beef jerky for lunch. For breakfasts, um, I did oatmeal. Oatmeal have, on average, 9 to 13 grams of protein per day. So, and then snack bars and uh, fruits and nuts, little snacks. So, I get everything in here. Look, it's not even filled. I could probably even get away with a 10-liter bag, but I grabbed the 14 just in case I go on longer hikes and I need it. But you need to be able to roll it at least three times. I'm doing multiple rolls. And then you clip it. And just like the other bag, it has a second part. You throw it over the top. And again, remember to cinch in a circle. Don't try to pull one side down all the way at once because you will rip it like I did on my sleeping bag one. But I'll show you how I got around that if you're still watching the video. <laughs> so. so another trick I do, once I'm starting to do the bigger bags like these ones, so my little tent bag, oops, my little tent bag, I was able to just kind of push because it was small and use my muscles. But when I get into the bigger bags, being a little person, not that strong, I sit on them. And once I sit, then I fall. And this really helps crush it down. And again, I'm still working in a circle, but now I'm using my entire body weight to crush and compress all the way down. So I could probably get this a little bit tighter, but you get the point. So now I have a little bag. Again, for reference size, like, look at, that's gonna fit in there so much better and take up so much less space than that huge pile of food you just saw all over the floor. So, the other thing that takes up the most space so you get food, your tent. And then your sleeping bag. And your sleeping bag is really important. A lot of people want to cheap out and buy like a Walmart special, but you it gets cold in the mountains at night, so you really want to invest well. There are synthetic and there are um, down sleeping bags. Down tends to be a lot of people's favorite because they're super warm, 
but then you also have to deal with like dry cleaning and um, not getting them wet because they get destroyed and everything else like that. So I went with a synthetic one also because if you know Len, my partner, he's allergic to life. So I don't want to kill him if he ever goes camping with me. So I got a synthetic sleeping bag and this is a um, particular brand of the one I got. And it goes up to, um, it will keep me warm up to 20 degrees. So this looks like a huge bag, right? This is bigger than my backpack. These come with um, compression sacks. Unfortunately, they're very cheap compression sacks that they come with. So a lot of people tend to throw this out and get a new one, like a nice one like this, that's heavy duty and waterproof and whatnot. But I'm on a budget, so I'm not gonna do that. So instead, I'm gonna use the one it came with. And even though it ripped, I can find the time and sew it. But I can also just tie it. And that's what I've been doing the last couple of weekends. So I've been practicing getting out there and using my gear and making sure that I'm really gonna be warm enough because that paranoia and you makes you start wanting to pack extra clothes and extra things that you really just don't need to be carrying the weight of. So, look at that. The whole thing fits in there. Some of them have like a little extra flappy material that will fit right over. And again, pull the strap, the little lummy thing down. I usually tuck these tails into it too so they're not dangling in my way. And this one actually has four straps, one of which, like I said, got busted. So this one originally was like down here. So four straps, right? Looks like a giant bag. Again, this one I sit on and start pulling up the straps. So because I broke that fourth strap, I'm just focusing on the three straps at the moment, getting that down as close as I can, and then with that fourth strap, I'm just going to tie it off. and then. I don't have to worry about it. So, tie it off. Little tiny bag now. So remember, it was in this giant bag. You can't even fit the whole thing in the camera view because it was so big. And now it's in this little bag. So now I have three little compression bags, all of which fit perfectly into my big 60 liter bag with space to spare because I have a second little bag like this that's going to fit all my clothing, my hiking uh, clothing, because you always want to have dry, clean clothes to get into at night. Um, you never want to hike in your sleep clothes. So I have a separate little bag for my sleep clothes that I put inside a grocery bag so they stay separate from my hiking clothes as well. Um, and I can fit an extra pair of pants, underwear, and shirt into them. So that's the magic of compression bags. I hope it helps you because I had never heard of them before I started all this. So we'll see.